Jim, thanks very much for the intro, and uh, thanks very much to all of you for coming out. You know, Jim said we have three of the most, most vocal advocates for education. That could mean loudest, <laughs> uh, wrongest, uh, talk the most. I hope what you will find at the, uh, at the end of our brief remarks tonight is that, that we're all passionate about uh, what hopefully you're going to cover during this conference. It's great to see the, everybody here is young, but it's really great to see the, the young folk up front and, and other places because it, um, for some of us who have been around a little bit longer, then it gives us hope that, that uh, someone will continue what we're trying to get started here and that uh, NASA and the nation will be much better off uh, than, than we have been uh, to, than we are today and, and that we have been in the past. So um, <clears throat> I want to especially thank my fellow panelists who have come out. Uh, Dr. Cora Merritt, the Acting Director of the National Science Foundation, as Jim said. Uh, Michael Locke, who is the Special Assistant for Science, Mathematics, Engineering, and Technology Education at the Department of Education. Uh, to both of them for being with us tonight. <clears throat> um, I was kidding, Michael, about stopping in from Chicago along with uh, many others in the administration and uh, also kidding him about something else that he and I will only talk about. So. <laughs> but it is, it is really good to have, have them join us tonight. We're delighted um, that all of you are able to attend this conference. And um, I want to take a moment to acknowledge Jim Stofan here who for some months now has been the acting head of our Office of Education and, uh, and all of his wonderful staff who have helped to put this, this summit on. They've done great work with this summit uh, and bringing it together and I appreciate all the other efforts that they have done in keeping NASA education moving over the past year. <clears throat> Most of you have probably heard me say before how important education is to me personally. My parents uh, I was blessed because my parents were both career educators in South Carolina. Uh, my mom and dad graduated from a uh, historically black college that's not very far from North Carolina A&T that has a big poster back there. Uh, I didn't hear anybody yell and scream, so <laughs> maybe the North Carolina A&T folk are back there at the bar <laughs> or something. But my mom and dad were in the, the great class of 1940 of Johnson C. Smith University. Uh, of which I am also a member. Uh, I had the privilege of speaking at the 50th anniversary of, uh, of their class at a commencement exercise, and I was made an honorary member of the class of 1940. And I, I have to admit, when I talk about the pleasure in seeing all the young people here, my wife and I were, geez, I don't know, we were pretty young when we went to this thing, and we couldn't hang. Uh, the members of the class of 40 put us, sent us to bed <laughs> because about 2 in the morning, uh, I, I think it was still CIAA night or something, I'm not sure, but we just, we couldn't handle it, so we, we got smart and went to bed. But as I said, my mom and dad were career teachers, and um, I watched them as I grew up. I watched how hard they worked, how dedicated they were to their profession, in spite of the fact that back in those days, they didn't make a lot of money. Um, but they got up with passion every morning and they hustled off to school after getting my brother and me ready. And, uh, and they trained and taught uh, young men and women who today are the leaders around South Carolina and other places in the nation. And who come up to me periodically when I see them and thank me uh, for the work that my mom and dad did and the care that they gave them. So for those of you who are here tonight who are teachers, let me thank you uh, for what you do because uh, the teaching profession is pretty tough. And it is one of these professions that people don't walk up to you every day and say thanks. Uh, it is frequently after you retire, uh, if then, that some of your students will find you and will express their appreciation for what you've done. But, but I want to say personally, because I see the product of your work uh, in the young people that we bring into NASA or the young people that that we're privileged to go and talk to in schools, and, and I want to thank you for everything that you do. To me, a vital aspect of all my roles in life, husband, father, grandfather, Marine, astronaut, and now administrator of NASA, um, a vital aspect of all these is a responsibility to use those roles to mentor and educate others as much as possible. I view this responsibility as an integral part of what I do and who I am. 
And I know many of you feel this way also. STEM education is a critical concern for us at NASA. We absolutely cannot do what we need to do without a skilled workforce. And we are not going to get the skilled workforce without a solid investment in STEM education. It's important to educate students in science and math. It's important for NASA, and it's important for our country. In his visit to the Kennedy Space Center back this past April, uh, President Obama said, and I quote, I believe that space exploration is not a luxury. It's not an afterthought in America's quest for a brighter future. It's an essential part of that quest, unquote. A NASA that is on the cutting edge of innovation is central to the President's goals. Congress and the President agree that technology development is important to a strong national economy. We need to show our students that they have something to look forward to when they go out into the world. They need to know that the workforce will be open to them. NASA is going to focus on developing technology to fly long duration missions beyond low Earth orbit. And that's good for STEM education. We have a lot of hard work to do, a lot we need to learn before determining that it's safe to send humans into deep space. Even if we were to utilize every development from our research and technology efforts to date, I'm not convinced we know all we need to know to send astronauts to today's ultimate destination of Mars. A robust technology development program will provide many opportunities to students in higher education. We will have more opportunity to reach out to universities and partner with science and engineering programs. These students will have a chance to gain hands-on experience with science and technology programs before they enter the workforce. They'll gain not only experience, but will also gain contacts and a competitive edge when they enter the workforce. And right now, one of the most important things we can offer our higher education students is the knowledge that they will be able to compete for and find a good job after they graduate. A few weeks ago, the Best Places to Work study was released by the Partnership for Public Service. In every demographic, NASA placed in the top five places to work. As an agency, we've put a great effort into making NASA a good place to work. Although being in the top five is commendable, we must continue to seek improvement in our work environment at the agency. We have an incredibly talented and motivated workforce, and this is a prime reason for our standing as one of the best places to work. A vital aspect of maintaining our standard as a great place to work is to continue to, be, to bring vibrant, energetic, ambitious new graduates, co-ops, interns, and early career hires to learn from those who are further along in their careers. At NASA, we view diversity and inclusion as critical, critical to our success. Our diversity is our strength. We are good at what we do. We are innovative and creative because our workforce is made up of different people from different backgrounds, viewpoints, and experiences. Speaking of diversity and inclusion, I'm very, very proud of our participation on the White House Council for Women and Girls. This week, we'll be featured in their blog for our collaboration with R&B singer Mary J. Blige's Foundation for the Advancement of Women Now, or FAWN, program. We have set up a collaboration between the Foundation and the NASA Science, Engineering, Mathematics, and Aerospace Academy, or SEMA, to engage middle school students in math and science learning. They began with a pilot over the summer involving on-the-job training for 30 high school students from Fawn's all-girl high school in the Bronx to be student aides. The student aides worked with four NASA SEMA teachers to deliver hands-on science, technology, engineering, and mathematics activities to 100 middle school students. The NASA content included experiments to illustrate the effects of gravity and Newton's laws on the forces affecting flight, explore chemistry and properties of solids, liquids, and gases, and assess living and working in space. NASA and Fawn are currently discussing a plan for the, tra for the trained Fawn High School girls to continue their work as student aides for first through ninth graders at the NASA SEMA Fall Academic Session at York College at the City University of New York. As in our collaboration with Mary J. Blige, it is so important that we work together. 
and that that's one reason I'm delighted to see all of you here tonight. We're working on reaching out to our colleagues across the government, in academia, in professional associations, and in industry. We need your ideas. NASA needs to halt cruel and wasteful experiments on monkeys. Monkeys in previous experiments performed by NASA have experienced fatal cancers, including brain tumors. Calm down, calm down. Thank she's, you. She's an old friend. Thank you very much. She follows me wherever I go. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna, it gives me an opportunity to say what I love to say anytime that happens. <laughs> And, and it's serious. You know, I'm a Marine. I spent 34 years as a career Marine. My son's in Afghanistan right now. And uh, I think it's an appropriate time. You know, she gives us an opportunity to, to, uh, to remind ourselves of who we are and what we are. Uh, we are the greatest nation on the face of the earth because a person can do that. Now, that offends some of us. Uh, and it interrupts what we're doing. But it's, it points out in such a great way uh, the phenomenal greatness of this nation. So um, I thank you for that opportunity. As I was saying, <laughs> we do need your ideas, your input, and your action. Uh, I do get emotional because, because um, there are a lot of kids around who are who are putting themselves at risk so that people can do that. And so um, that's pretty special. Over the next two days, you'll learn about our, one, our new one-stop shopping initiative for internship, fellowship, and scholarship opportunities. The overarching mission of the one-stop shopping initiative is to help NASA build its, st its STEM workforce pipeline. Prospective students, student interns, fellows, and stakeholders now have one integrated NASA application for their use to apply to a variety of internship and fellowship programs across NASA. My hope is that we will continue to develop ways to work together because I know that together we can have a greater impact on STEM education. I think the NASA Office of Education has done a great job of designing and implementing this effort. And I hope that you will all utilize our one-stop shopping initiative. Let me close by saying that everything we can do to help one another puts us in a better place. STEM education is not just a NASA issue. It's a national issue. It's up to all of us here to engage and educate students and to ensure that they have the best opportunities we can give them. Let me thank you all for coming again and let me pass the baton to my colleague.